Dr. Fizz here on the Galilean Transformation. We consider two frames of reference, one called the K-frame, which will be our laboratory frame at rest in the laboratory, and the K-prime frame, which moves at velocity V to the right down the x-axis. Notice that we set this up so that when the origins coincide, we synchronize the clocks and T equals T prime equals zero. Then from that time on we can easily measure how far the origin is down the road by the formula V times T since the K prime frame is moving at velocity V and it starts its journey when we have T equal T prime equals zero here at the origin. So this is called the Galilean transformation and the equations that we write out are two. We write down that any x prime point, say this point here, is given in terms of x. We think of x as going all the way out to x prime consisting of two parts, vt plus x prime. And what we do then is we can subtract vt from both sides of the equation so that we have x prime on the left and we have x and t on the right. In a sense these are the laboratory coordinates and these this would be the coordinate in the moving frame. For the uh, time since we synchronized the clocks at the origin t prime will always equal t and this is also a result of the absolute time of Newtonian physics that time intervals in each frame are the same, which we'll see later is not the case in relativity. Well, let's look at that here, a little chart that shows us the laws of physics for the uh, small and the large and the slow and the fast. And here is classical mechanics. We talked about this before. And the Galilean transformation is the transformation of classical physics. We will be studying shortly the Lorentz transformation which generalizes this, extends it to the fast realm. And later in our course we'll talk about what this means, the wavelength here, and the Dirac idea in the realm of the fast and the small.